As we all know, in the day and age of pollution and overpopulation, the emission of carbon dioxide is higher than ever before. Over the past 100 years, carbon dioxide levels have increased nearly 33%. Most of us know the effect of this raising number on humans, but what does it mean for our friends under the sea? The jumping conch snail is native to the Red Sea. It comes in all shapes and sizes, but is still preyed upon by the cone shell. To escape its predator, the conch snail uses a jumping mechanism by pushing its whole body backward. However, the raising levels of carbon dioxide interrupt this mechanism. A 2013 study by Watson et al examined how the increasing levels of carbon dioxide affect the brain of the jumping conch snail, or the gibberless gibberless. Although this paper addressed six different experiments, we chose to focus on experiments two and four, which examined the effect of elevated carbon dioxide levels on the predator escape behavior and the effect of the GABA antagonist on the behavioral response. In experiment two, conch snails were exposed to environments with high concentrations of carbon dioxide for about a week. They were then placed in an arena and monitored for five minutes to see the number of jumps, final distance, and length of time required for the jumps. In experiment four, the conch snails were exposed to the same high levels of carbon dioxide. One group was then treated with gabazine for 30 minutes. Gabazine is a neurotransmitter receptor that's supposed to block GABA. GABA is the enzyme in the brain that is affecting the snail's ability to jump. Snails were monitored for 12 minutes to see if gabazine restored their behavior to normal. This graph shows the results of experiment two and proves that the number of snails that jumped away from the predator was reduced by half in snails that were treated in elevated levels of carbon dioxide. This graph represents the escape tra trajectory of the snails. Untreated snails, like Gary, tended to jump, jump straight back from the predator, while snails exposed to carbon dioxide jumped at acute angles toward their predator. The results from the fourth experiment proved that snails exposed to carbon dioxide but were, that were treated with gabazine jumped just as much as the control group, proving that the gabazine treatment restored normal function. The giverless giverless, like many snails, graze on algae and reefs and are preyed upon by larger mollusks and starfish. If they are eliminated from their ecosystem because of the increasing CO2 levels, there is no telling what changes could occur. Additionally, the GABA receptor, the specific receptor that is affected by the elevated carbon dioxide levels, is found in many other invertebrate marine groups. The jumping snail is just one example of how increasing carbon dioxide levels can affect the sea world that we know.